Easy. Hey, cycling community. This is Steve Grusis, and this is Susie, mother of the Banshees. Three pups, which are now five years old, that are still with us. Oh, exciting, huh? Being on TV. Stage races. One of my favorite races that I've done a number of years is a Tour de Gila in New Mexico, a five-day mountainous stage race. Training for stage races is uh, different than not training for stage races. What I do is I employ a lot of mini blocks. And uh, because of work, I can't do mini blocks all the time, but I was doing mini blocks about once a month to once every six weeks. Huh, you like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And each mini block was uh, kind of the culmination of the previous macro block that I just had done. Still with me? So, let me put her down here, right here. Yeah, that's a good girl. That's a good girl. Right, let's take a look at her right here. Yeah, that's a good girl. Yeah. yeah. We gotta be right back. There are two things to keep in mind when designing a mini block. First is rest. You have to be well rested going into the block and then have sufficient rest after the block so you can get supercompensation. Supercompensation is basically your body adapting to the extra workload that will then give you more form and uh, more strength. The second thing is the design of the block. You don't want to make it so easy that you're not going to benefit at best from it and at worst you lose a little form and uh, you don't want to make it so hard that you go past the super compensation effect and go into overtraining where that will cause you to take extra time to recover and then you lose form from that. I started off with three day blocks and then I went to four day blocks. I never did a five day block. I didn't feel that I needed to. So at each block I had in my mind that I had to go through this amount of days and uh, I, was, I was functional at each day, even though I was getting tired at times, but uh, I was uh, able to accomplish everything I needed to accomplish. When uh, after that last ride on that last day of the block, same thing with the, uh, the race in New Mexico. After that last race, then I was dead. I didn't want to think about the bike. I just wanted to rest, and, uh, and then that was it. So uh, at one such training block a few years ago, it was the T block. And so this is a Thanksgiving block that I usually do, whether I am training for a stage race or not. Starts Thursday morning, and then we go eat a lot uh, in the afternoon, and it all goes all the way through uh, Sunday. So when I got home Sunday, I was, as I said before, just good and tired. All I wanted to do was eat, take a shower, and sleep. But there was a message on my phone. It's from my sister, our Theo Yorgo, Theo, Uncle, Yorgo, George, remember I'm Greek, uh, wanted us to come and cut down some trees. Theo Yorgo is an orchard farmer, but he's a well-off orchard farmer. He's also eccentric, kind of an odd eccentric, with a weird sense of humor. The fetching Mrs. Grusis always says that when I look at him, I'm looking at my future. So, he likes to uh, save money, and uh, he gets these projects for the family. And uh, we have a good time often doing these projects. Some are harder than others, but you know, it's his family, so we go do them. So uh, there was no getting out of this one. So I took a shower, a quick shower, I ate a bunch of food, and I took my backpack and stuffed a bunch of hammer bars and cliff bars and water in it, and off I went. So I get to the orchard, and uh, of course, everybody's been working from the morning and there are, uh, the chainsaws are all gone. There's just a couple of axes there. So they give me an ax and tell me to go to the far ends uh, of the property and uh, look for the marked trees and start cutting them down. So I uh, grab my ax and I'm trudging across there and trudging kind of slowly because uh, my, my just everything from the bottom half is just sore. So I get to the uh, end of the property find the marked trees, and so I, I put down my bag, and I take my first swing, and then all of a sudden, Theo Yorgo pops out of nowhere and says, not this tree. This is where I first laid eyes on my first love. So, 
as hard as it is to swing an axe after four days of riding, it's even harder to stop at mid-swing. But stop it, I did. So I didn't say anything, I just picked up my bag, walked a couple rows down, found another marked tree, put my bag down, started to take a swing, all of a sudden he pops out of nowhere again, and I thought he had taken off, but there he was, and he said, not this tree. This is where I first made love to my first girlfriend. So I, I, just, I dropped the axe, now I'm, I'm just kind of dumbfounded. I'm, I'm now starting to mumble colorful metaphors to myself, pick up the axe, pick up my bag, and just walk around, walk another couple of rows over, find another tree. So I take my axe, and before I swing, I look around, I don't see him. I look around again, I still don't see him. I take the swing, I pops out again. It says, no, not this three either. This is where her mother first saw us making love. So at that point, he had me hooked. I had to ask, what did she say? Bye. Until next time.